Good morning guys. Well here's the situation. Uh, over the last few months I've noticed an intermittent service four-wheel drive signal that's come up while driving in four-wheel drive. The second thing I've noticed is that I can shift into four-wheel drive either high or low to the, without difficulty, but I can't shift back into into two high or low. Um, this is a control panel here, so once I'm in four, to get it back to two what I have to do is I have to turn the engine off and then restart and then when I restart I can get it back into two. But uh, with this signal going on, I can't um, get it back into two without stopping and turning the engine off. What's the diagnosis? Okay, let's take you into the scanner and see what we've got. We've got one trouble code here. And it's C0305 which is front prop shaft speed sensor system malfunction. And let's go into live data and see what we see here. And we'll focus on these. So your value is going to be here. We're both at zero at the moment. So I'm going to um, take the car out for a spin now and we'll see what happens with these numbers. So you can see already my rear prop shaft sensor is working fine and the front should be, have the same numbers. And you can see the front's not reacting at all even though the car is moving forward and we're clearly in four-wheel drive right now. Okay, let's get this skid plate off. It's in our way. These are 15 millimeter. Okay, now I've got you on the passenger side looking over to the driver's side and you can see this is the encoder motor. You can see there's some red transmission fluid. That's not the uh, fluid in the transfer case that's there. That's transmission fluid. And it's, you can see it's also coming from higher up. I think it's leaking at this juncture right here between the uh, transfer case in the transmission. I'm going to have to deal with that, but that's not our problem today. Our problem is the speed sensor, so we're going to focus on the problem at hand. All right, I've got you on the uh, driver's side now. This is the uh, front prop shaft right here. This is the transfer case, and the sensor that we're after is this one right here. Now, the problem we're dealing with can be uh, from the computer itself, from the uh, wires leading to the um, ABS computer, it can be from the sensor itself, or it could be from the permanent magnet that drives that sensor. And so as a starting effort, I'm going to discontinue this um, electrical connector. I'm going to remove the sensor, and we're going to look at it on the bench. Here's a sensor on the bench, and the first thing I notice is that it looks really grungy in there. I'm not sure if you can perceive that. But uh, when I took it off, it almost felt like it wasn't clicked properly into the connector, so I've got hopes that this connector will still be okay. Um, this is a 19 millimeter deep socket that I used to get it out. A three-quarter would work, but um, there's not that much room in there either. So we're going to clean this out with a Q-tip and some deoxid and see what we come out with. Okay, I'm just doing a continuity check here to uh, see what the resistance is. Unfortunately, I don't have a normal value, but we're about 26, 27 million ohms. Actually, before we put this back on the vehicle, let's try something here. I've got this set up on an oscilloscope and um, it's just uh, simply measuring the voltage. And when I draw something that's metal close to the magnet that's inside, and I can actually feel the magnet. Look what happens. Okay, I'm gonna go into the vehicle, but it's gonna be so cramped, I'm not gonna be able to show you what I'm gonna do. This is a uh, tip cleaner for an oxyacetylene torch. You can get these for a few bucks at any, uh, any store that sell these things. And I'm gonna clean the female end of the connector. Now, it's a bit of a dance because if I, put too wide a um, cleaner in, I'm going to spread the connections and that'll make the connection worse. So I need to use something small enough that it's going to get in there and clean the area, but not so large that it's going to permanently spread the connection. Mm -hmm. Alright, I've carefully front probed this connector with a real tiny connector and we'll see if we power our ground on the sensor circuit. And we got clearly ground. 
on the one side. Let's see what the other side does. And this will be the signal side, and of course we, don't, we get no signal there. So that's as expected. The ground is on the right if the uh, hook for the connector is on the bottom. I hope you can see this. These are plastic threads, so you want to be careful. And I'm just slowly spinning this in. The nightmare here would be to cross-thread this. You'd mess up the sensor. Having one of these stubby uh, ratchet wrenches makes a big difference. That should be good enough. Now... This is in two. I'll shift to park, switching to four high. And now we're in four high. Damn, that front prop, tra prop shaft speed sensor is still reading zero. Ooh. Okay, I got you in the rear of the vehicle looking forward. The trouble light is hanging on the rear drive line right there. Now this transfer case has three speed sensors. The rear prop shaft speed sensor is that there on the right. Uh, that one seems to be working normally. It's got a vehicle speed sensor which is on the opposite side. It's got the front prop shaft speed sensor that we took out earlier. Now my plan today is to swap out the rear and the front if it's possible to see if the problem uh, switches to the rear to verify that indeed it's a problem with my sensor before I go out and buy one. Now I've got some time complements of COVID today and so rather than just swapping the sensors out I'm going to actually plot out the waveforms on my scope to compare the good with the bad to be used as a benchmark in the future. So for this next part, let me show you this breakout lead set that I've got here. This one's made by Pico. AIS Wave make a similar set. Now th this Pico kit, it's designed to uh, tap into a connector, into the inside of a connector. And uh, let me show you here. There's both a female and a male end. And they come in, of course, various sizes. And these two are connected electrically. And there's a third tap, which is a female banana plug right here. And so the way these things work is you tap into the connector and you monitor the circuit while it's in use. Now, you don't, of course, have to have that. You could rely on the old standby. Any mechanic has done this many times. You could use a pin to back probe the connector. And uh, you do, do so carefully so you don't spread the terminals. Or you can tap into the wires directly with a wire piercing probe like this one. This one's made by Power Pro, but there's all kinds of ones like this as well. Okay, I've hooked up my breakout leads. Don't get your pansies in a knot. I didn't spread the connectors. Now we're going to hook up the Pico. Well, rather than recording this live, I saved the screens in the Pico software to look at later. What I'm expecting to see from a standard two-wire GM VRS sensor is a one volt sine wave that increases in both amplitude and frequency as the shaft speed increases. But look at this here. At this point right here I start the car and right away we've got a 0.7 volt bias voltage even before the shaft starts to spin. Then I use the engine to spin those wheels and I get up to about 20 kilometers and this is where I turn the key off. And if you look back you see we're not seeing anything here. Even if I zoom in, all we're seeing is artifact. Remember, this is a known good sensor. I'm not really sure what I've done wrong here. I rechecked the leads, I tested the bad front sensor, same thing. I'm guessing that GM wanted better slow speed data than typically seen with their old VRS sensor technology, so the calculations are done within the module by measuring current, not voltage. The fact that the 0.7 volts was present in the front circuit is even more evidence to say that the wiring to the transfer case control module is good. In any case, let's go on to put the good rear sensor into the front slot and see if it works. I got you looking through the magnifier. This is the bad sensor, or the one I think is bad for the front. This is the rear, which is good. 
I, I believe these are both identical. Um, they've both got 22512 inscribed on the side there. They have identical length and identical thread and um, basically the markings are identical. The only difference is this one has a 2-4 right there and this one has a 1-9, presumably the date of manufacture. Okay, let me show you what I've done here. I've taken the sensor from the rear prop shaft and I've put it into the front prop shaft position. I haven't bothered to put the front prop shaft into the rear, so the rear is just empty and the wires are unhooked. And now watch, watch what happens. I'm in drive and I'm going to move. My speedometer is showing speed and look at this, the front prop shaft is moving. I'm up on four jack stands, so that's uh, what we expect. So this is verified that the um, front prop half center is bad and it's time to get another one. So here's the new part and the part number. I got this at uh, the local dealer because I didn't want to have to pay for shipping. It's worth about $40 on Rock Auto at the moment. And I've tapped into it to see what the resistance is. And this ohms out at about 13, 1400 um, ohms. The uh, good sensor on the right side was about 1700 and of course the, the bad sensor was 2 million ohms and so one could easily have used um, a, a, a multimeter here to get the diagnosis rather than to do anything with the scope. So our problem is solved. The front prop shaft and the rear prop shaft are now going at the same rate. Now I'm going to show you a little complexity here. I've got this ABS light that just popped up on the dash and um, let me show you why this has happened. I get a, an extra code, a new code, C0226, that's happened just since uh, putting the car up onto the four jack stands and, and driving it for a bit. And then when you go over to the live data, you see this. Now, I'm going to shift into drive and I'll show you at the moment. And uh, just watch the left and right front wheel speeds. So you can see the right front wheel is um, moving faster than the left. And when you think about how a, transfer, or how a differential works, that sometimes happens where the right and left aren't uh, in complete synchrony. And so that's not really a problem. When we get onto the road, it's going to be resolved. But it's an interesting observation that happens when you're up on, in two-wheel drive up on four jack stands. Okay, well I took it for a test drive and everything is uh, bang on. The four-wheel drive is functioning normally. The ABS code is gone. Um, the vehicle is basically back to normal. I'm going to call that a fix. Now you'll notice that I used a lot of technology here, mostly for fun. But the truth is that you could have got by with much less um, in the way of tools. You needed a multimeter, a few probes, and some hand tools, and that's about it. The key to the diagnosis was, of course, the resistance. And as soon as you saw that 2 million ohms of resistance, it would have been time to change out the uh, sensor. The fact is that even the parts changes of the world would have by luck come to the right diagnosis in this case. But where's the fun in that? See, I appreciate you guys coming along. Thanks for watching.